Panginoon bago kong maging ganap na pari nais ko munang humingi ng kapatawaran lalong lalo na kay Samantha mahal ko sa pero hindi ko mahindian at baliwalain ang pagtawag mo kung talagang tinatawag ka niya Magpaparaya ako. Gaunin mo to. Para kahit paminsan-minsan, naisip mo ko. Pantasal mo na rin ako. I love you. Goodbye. Sinundan ko ang iyong tawag at napagdesisyonan kong pumasok ng seminaryo. Di ko man lubos maintindihan ng una, inabayan naman ako ng Espiritu Santo. Sa aking pagpasok, tinagap niyo ko bilang isang tunay na anak Panginoon. Sa loob ng seminaryo, hindi lamang sa pag-aaral ako natuto. Natutunan ko din makasalamuha at makipagkaibigan. Kasama sila sa mga masasayang alaala ko bilang isang seminarista. Bago ko maging isang ganap na tagapaglingkod mo, Panginoon, tanggapin mo nawa itong taos pusong pasalamat ko sa iyo. Ito ang aking samot na langin. Amen. Sa aking pagtungtong sa ikatlo at ikaapat na taon sa seminaryo, patuloy pa rin ang mainit na pagtanggap niyo sa akin sa Divine World Seminary. Lalong lumalim ang pagkilala ko sa inyo, Panginoon. Naging mas malapit ako sa mga bagay na inyong nilikha dito sa digdig kung saan ikaw ang naghahari. Ngayong isa na akong ganap na pari, 
hayaan mong ipagpatuloy ko kasama ng aking mga estudyante ang kalooban mong lumikha sa tulong ng iyong lakas at biyaya ng isang daigdig kung saan nagahari ka sa bawat puso. Isang daigdig na may kapayapaan at katarungan at pagkalinga sa kalikasan. Papatuloy pa kaya sa aking ginagawa, Panginoon?
the prayer to Jesus, the divine word. Their Jesus, divine word made flesh. From the beginning, you already were. Before even time begun, you are son, and with the Father and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. But in the fullness of time, you were created man, became man yourself. Through God, the Holy Spirit, and Mary, you became Jesus, divine word made flesh. You came to our world to save us and show us how to live and love here so we may live and love hereafter. There Jesus, divine word incarnate, please teach us to follow you. May our love for you always be made flesh, not ever lost in word or song alone. In prayer, we come face to face with you, like you with the Father and the Holy Spirit. In love and service, we may likewise come face to face with our sisters and brothers the least of them, most of all. For as we treat each other, so do we treat you. In your name we pray now, always and in all ways. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. The Church today celebrates the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, Apostle for the Apostles. Our mass presider today is Reverend Father Marlon Bovier Vargas, SVD, a missionary from Spain. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our fellow parishioners, to our those who are joining us in our worship at home. Welcome to this celebration. Today, we celebrate the Feast of Mary Magdalene, whom Pope Francis calls the Apostle to the Apostles. She was the one sent by the recent Jesus to announce the resurrection to the Apostles. Let us take this another opportunity, another day, to look at our relationship with Jesus and ask for the grace to know Him better so that we can take Him to other out of the fullness of our hearts. So let us acknowledge our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. On this feast of St. Mary Magdalene, let us give glory and praise to our loving God. bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of the Father. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example, we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for the sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet, now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh finds and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with excellent lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is reasoning for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is reasoning for you, O Lord my God. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Of 
the Lord knows no ending. All in Israel say God's love has no end. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dearest friends in Christ, do you know a person or someone who is like Mary Magdalene? There are at least three striking scenarios that caught my attention as I reflected on our gospel today. Mary Magdalene was grieving. She was mourning for the loss of her friend, Jesus. Yet, she was able to wake up early morning and went to the tomb and saw it empty. I wonder how could a person like her do that? that in the midst of your grieving, in the midst of your suffering, you would still strive to wake up and to begin another day. And then she visited the tomb, a place where it could lead her to remembering all the wonderful memories she had with Jesus Christ. But at that time, she was grieving. And another striking scenario in the Gospel is that Mary Magdalene was able to tell clearly. She was able to speak of what she found out about the empty tomb, despite of her overwhelming emotions. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple. She responded to the two angels in white who asked her why she's weeping. She also demanded to tell her where the body of Christ, she did not recognize Jesus. Imagine how could she experience this in the midst of her overwhelming emotions, of her sadness, of her grieving. And thirdly, Mary Magdalene recognizes the voice of her master, of the recent Christ. Jesus, she knows that it is Jesus who is calling her in the midst of her suffering. 
Thus, I personally wonder, how did she experience that? In our humanity, we know that when we are grieving, when we are suffering, we are in pain, our judgment is clouded. It's difficult for us to articulate what we have inside of our hearts. How? How did it happen that Mary was able to do this? And I believe the first reading could provide us an answer. It is because of her love for Christ, for Jesus. Maybe today we are invited to reflect, do we long for Christ when we are in suffering, when we are in pain, when we are dealing with lots of problems in our family, at workplace, in our community? Can we also experience Mary Magdalene's encounter with the recent Christ? Mary's sadness was turned into joy when she recognized Jesus and she immediately went to tell the disciple that she has seen him. Dearest friends, whenever we have the gospel about Jesus' encounter with Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb, it always reminds me of my experience when I was doing my hospital chaplaincy years ago during my formation. I deeply admire those patients, especially when I was assigned in the cancer patient or cancer in the department of the area or the place where the cancer patients were receiving treatment. Each day when I visit them, they share with me their struggles. They share with me their efforts on how they strive not to cling to the Jesus that they knew in the past, but rather they strive to embrace the new Christ, the Christ that could pro provide them peace, hope, and love. I admire them that despite of their suffering, they strive to be with Christ. They were like Mary Magdalene. They strive to be persons of hope by not clinging too much on their suffering. They depend on their daily sufficient grace that the recent Christ provides them. So today, let us listen to this invitation of Jesus Christ. Mary thinks she is clinging to the Jesus she knew before. But for us, our Christian faith requires us to be open, to allow ourselves to take another turning point. That is the interior turning to the Lord. Each time we attend our Eucharist is a sacred occasion where Jesus Christ calls us to not to cling to our past, to not stay in darkness. Through the sacred bread and wine, we are invited to experience that transformation from darkness to light, as what Mary Magdalene experienced. Jesus invites us to begin each new day by telling others how we have seen the Lord in our daily lives. As we approach to this weekend, perhaps we could share to our brothers and sisters, to our family, how we experienced Christ throughout the week. Christian faith life is a constant seeking of inner freedom, to not to cling to those that hinder us to love, to know, and to be closer to Jesus Christ. It is not easy. It is not a quick change of heart that could happen overnight. So may the message of our first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians be our source of motivation, our hope, to seek the newness of life in Christ. The love of Christ drives us forward. It was this love that drove Mary Magdalene. And this is the same love that we receive through Christ that we are called to the newness of life. Therefore, brothers and sisters, to what newness are we called today? To what newness are we called this, e this weekend? And may the example of Mary Magdalene inspire us to know Jesus better, closer, and deeper. Amen. Please rise.
Mary Magdalene experienced the joy of encountering Jesus on His resurrection. May this glorious event bring meaning and renewal to our lives too as we say, through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father, that the Church of God may be renewed in the risen Christ and bring His message of hope and love to all the world. We pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. That the community of believers may bear witness to Christ's resurrection through the example and constant conversion from sin. We pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. That those who are in the dark tomb of sin may find in Jesus the strength and inspiration to rise to a life of faithfulness to the gospel, we pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. That those who feel disheartened by the seemingly unconquerable suffering may find in the resurrection the courage to continue their quest for a better life, we pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. That those who have passed from this life may be forgiven of their sins by Jesus, our Redeemer, we pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. In silence, we pray for other personal intentions. We pray. Through the resurrection of Jesus, be gracious to us, Father. Father, may we welcome the good news of the resurrection in our future life with you. Grant, we ask, that we may experience the fruit of his resurrection in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me and drink, come to me and drink, O let all who are thirsting, come to me and drink, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and know that I am the sons and your daughter shall prophesy. Come to me and drink, come to me and drink, all at all who are thirsting, come to me and drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. 
And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Onesto our Bishop and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ, her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel. Prayer for vocations. O oh, Father, you desire all of us to be happy. Stir up the grace of a religious vocation in the hearts of many men and women. Grant to them the willingness and generosity to give of themselves, their lives, their time, and their talents to the service of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, and to His Holy Church. Many more men and women go forth as priests, deacons, brothers and sisters to bring the truth of our Catholic faith to all others so that soon they, too, may know you better and love you more, and serving you be truly happy. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Arnold Jensen and Joseph Fernandez, pray for us. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have seen and received the Lord. Let us go and announce the good news. Thanks be to God. Hey, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, and blessed are you, blessed. So 